foolish human. Did you really think that you could stop me? I am here to turn the entire world gay. <laughs> Well, don't mind me, I'm just sitting here preparing characters for my juicy, juicy D&D campaigns. Good evening, ladies, lasses and lasses, welcome to the click and you smell absolutely astounding today. And don't let anyone else tell you otherwise, they would be absolutely horrific liars, trust me. Anyway, today we're gonna do something absolutely beautiful, but before we get into that, I have exciting news everyone. Did you know what's coming out on the 23rd of November? That is right, a glow-in-the-dark emotional support team, and oh my god, mwah, it's so good, it lights up your world, both in brightness and in darkness, it is absolutely beautiful. Get yourself a glowing little wholesome demon on the 23rd of November. It's gonna be on campaign for a few weeks, I think it's even a sale like when it comes out it's gonna be absolutely amazing and you can do this oh it's so good you can do everything with it it's absolutely astounding but anyway today we're gonna do something absolutely beautiful we're gonna look into r slash lgbtq because there is a bunch of gay memes and posts and stuff that i really enjoy so i figured i would look at them together with all you beautiful beings enjoy Mwah. opinion on trans people wow i've only been mm -hmm. asked this question a hundred thousand times at least <laughs> Well, how about this? I'm going to turn it around. I wonder what trans people's opinion of me is. Mm -hmm. Because, you see, I I choose to wear overalls and work boots and a ball cap. And I choose to go hunting and I choose to go fishing and I choose to live my life the way I want to live it. Mm -hmm. I wonder if that affects trans people's lives in the least. The answer to that is no, it doesn't. Well, guess what? If Jack wants to call himself Jill and wants to wear a dress and wants to live his life the way he wants to live it and wants to think of himself as, a, as herself, that doesn't affect me in the fucking least. I don't give two shits. I don't care. <laughs> so let trans people live their lives and I'm going to live my life. And other people go live their lives. You know, life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. And if you want to change your name from Sarah to Sam, or you want to change your name from Sam to Sarah, that's what makes you happy. You have a constitutional right to do so. That's my opinion. Hope y'all have a good day now. Aww, that's really sweet. I kind of like that. It's very much to live and let live. I feel like that's something that gets lost so often nowadays with a variety of various topics. People get ridiculously upset when other people aren't identical to them, even though it doesn't matter. And you don't see this only with this kind of activism or the LGBTQ debate or stuff like that. You see it in many kinds of life choices or preferences or even entertainment, you know, whatever it might be. People are so oddly upset when something doesn't align with exactly how they do it. But that's the beauty of the world. People are different and that's something we should value. It would be incredibly boring if everyone was exactly the same. So live and let live is a pretty good thing. Most stuff you do don't actually matter to other people. Like who you choose to love, who you choose to marry, who you choose to be, or what you choose to identify as doesn't really affect anyone else. And I don't understand why we should pretend it does. The more happy people in the world, the better the world is gonna be. The lack of boomer LGBTQ plus people isn't because it's more popular now. Many were hurt by their peers, died from government inaction during the age crisis, committed the game over due to lack of social support, or have had to live in the closet due to their peers' cruelty. It should be seen as something positive. You have an incredibly similar curve when it comes to left-handedness. When it became more accepted, all of a sudden you didn't drill people into this like preconceived notion of what is normal and force them to do something. So all of a sudden, when it became accepted, the statistics skyrocketed. And you see the same thing here, and it's due to a multitude of factors, and it should be seen as a good indicator. And also it's partially because the umbrella term of what is considered LGBTQ has also widened. So it's a multivariable thing, but it's not like, oh my god, it's just this new generation. That's it. It's always been there. So the fact that the statistic is increasing should be a good sign that we are becoming more accepting and open to these things. It's not that it's just being invented now, it's always been there. I don't wear rainbow items to tell you who's in my bed. I wear rainbow items so the family across the street knows they are safe, so the couple in the restaurant know they aren't alone, so the boy who sees me notice him looking at dresses know I won't judge. I wear pride because you make them hide. I think that's pretty beautiful and it doesn't take a lot, just show casually in life that you just support people and are accepting. It comes a really long way.
It really does. A transgender woman in Tennessee is asking the state to make a consistent ruling about her gender after a government office labeled her male, but police arrested her on a female-specific charge. Andrea of Morristown 10, who had gender reassignment surgery and has been recognized as a woman by the Social Security Office, decided to make a statement after her local Tennessee Department of Safety office refused to let her change the gender on her driver's license from male to female. She walked out on the parking lot and removed her shirt, which she reasoned would be acceptable if the state recognized her as a male. Instead, she was arrested for indecent exposure. <laughs> oh, well, isn't that just convenient? It doesn't work when you want something innocent like a driver's license, but they sure as heck will punish you for stuff that isn't supposed to be punishable by their own logic. <laughs> Come on, man. <laughs> I must say, though, it's such a beautiful stunt to just, like, call up the hypocrisy. Man, that's funny. If more members of Gen C would have been brought to Hooters as children, I can guarantee we would have had a red wave last night. Heterosexuals openly admit they have to groom children to perpetuate their lifestyle. But also, wouldn't that just have turned all the lady children that you bring to Hooters gay? You know? It, it doesn't that follow the same line of logic, too, no? Wasn't there another outrage recently where they said that you're allowed to breastfeed baby boys because that makes them straight and manly? But if you do it to the girls, it's gonna turn them gay. You know, uh, dear male Karen, just because you are nautilizing something doesn't mean like an infant literally eating <laughs> is seeing it as a naughty action. <laughs> like, Jesus Christ, man. Man, look at them farm animals feeding their babies. That's so gay. <laughs> like the logic is mind-boggling. I have been forced to explain homosexuality to my kids aged three and four because their uncle is gay. This incredibly difficult and traumatic experience went as follows. Child, why does Uncle Bob go everywhere with Pete? Ah, oh, it's because they're in love, just like mommy and daddy are. Oh, can I have a biscuit? We are all scarred for life. Scarred, I tell you. <laughs> we will never be the same. I think posts like this are quite beautiful because kids aren't really born with prejudice for these things. They learn it. They pick it up somewhere. You know, a couple holding hands in public is something they already know. They know what it is. They have a mom and a dad and other people holding hands too should be perfectly normal. It isn't like some big scary thing. Matthew. Hey. Uh, hey. Trying to get that p pounded? I am trans. Oh, my bad. Trying to get that butt pounded? Oh, there we go. Yes, indeed. You know, it's only been a few text messages back and forth, but Matthew seems like a keeper. Have fun and stay safe. Recovering bigot, I am sorry. Free hugs. That is so sweet, though. That is so sweet. Look how wholesome this is. I think encouraging people to change in general is a really good thing, which is something I feel that the internet, for example, gets really wrong. The internet is super good at holding things against people that they have said or done or, you know, opinions they have held in the past. And don't get me wrong, you shouldn't necessarily forgive anything. You know, there is, there is a grayscale when it comes to, like, bad actions. Don't get me wrong. But when it comes to stuff like opinions, we should allow people to change because I think that when we allow people to change, that's when the world is going to change. Being informed by something and changing your opinion regarding a topic should be seen as a positive rather than seen as how you were naive or ignorant in the past seen as a negative. You know, it's the journey that is a good one, you know? Same-sex marriage is not gay privilege. It is equal rights. Privilege would be something like gay people not paying taxes. <laughs> like churches don't. <laughs> Man, this little crayon side is savage as hell. <laughs> get off the sub if you disagree with trans people's existence. That's it. You don't get to be a part of this community if you don't support trans rights. I mean, the whole thing is also such a trap from people that want to just remove rights from everyone. You start off a little bit and be like, hey, if you just agree with us to get rid of these people, we'll support you. What do you think happens when those people disappear? They'll come for you next, you know? It, that's, that's how this works. It's divide and conquer trans girl. Live in a conservative state with my dad. Dad is a gun-loving center-right Republican. Dad saw all the anti-trans political stuff happening on the news. Dad asked me how I feel about moving to a blue state so I can be comfortable and happy. <laughs> my dad loves me after all. That's so sweet. That is so freaking wholesome. I love this. This post is beautiful. Not, not the fact that it's necessary in the first place, but like, that is so sweet. That is so sweet. After reading so much, like, insane parents and stuff, this gives me a little bit of hope. Like, you know, people and parents and families are able to, like, step above all the BS in the world and just be there for each other. That's kind of beautiful. It brings me a bit of hope about humanity, doesn't it? Opera GX. Here is a real Pride Month logo. Mwah. Finally, someone doing it right. Frick rainbow capitalism. I love men kissing. Can we just... 
Can we just normalize that for next year? Like, it's just gonna be- it's just gonna be a bunch of smoochies instead on, like, everything. Oh, it's gonna be beautiful. I'm looking forward to it already. I got back to work after being very sick and found my wall calendar hidden in my desk with this note. I am pissed. Queer all year. General manager. Not work appropriate. What? Really? <laughs> Inspiring LGBTQ plus icons to celebrate pride every day. How- how is this inappropriate? It doesn't even look explicit if that would have been like the complaint, you know. I, I could see that some stuff would have been maybe too raunchy for an office when it comes to certain calendars. But to be fair, like I've seen a lot of calendars in office spaces that are like really <laughs> freaking raunchy and stuff, you know, to be fair. But this doesn't even seem to be that. There is like no reason to remove this whatsoever. What the hell? <laughs> I wonder if this would fall under some kind of like discrimination stuff. I'm not deep enough into like office culture and policies, but... It seems a little bit sus, doesn't it? Respect my trans homies or I am gonna identify as a fucking problem. <laughs> if you don't start messing with my friends, my new pronouns are gonna be fucking problem. LGB fascism. Hey, let me out and I will help you get rid of the TQ. Oh, I'm gonna be sneaky snipping it out. Yay, we're so happy. <laughs> exactly. That's what it is. It's just divide and conquer BS. Do not. Fall for it. Couldn't agree more. Fascism is a beast that's never full. Once a target is gone, the next one is moved onto the chopping block. The fascists will never be satisfied until the only one who can enjoy freedom and happiness is the fascists. None are equal in the eyes of the beast. There are only threats and prey. Yep, indeed. It's not about inclusivity or being like, oh my god, if we only remove this little thing, everything is gonna be... No. No, it doesn't, it doesn't stop. It really doesn't. Gay kids read thousands of books about straight characters, yet they still grow up gay. But y'all are worried if your son, Billy, reads just one book where a penguin has two dads, he's going to wake up the next day and ask Brad to prom. And also, if this is the line of logic we're following, couldn't you just, like, cancel it out? Oh no, Timmy read a gay book in school. All right, let's just have, have lunch at Hooters on Saturday, and he'll be right back to straight again. Heck yeah. Or maybe that makes him bi. You know, if, if he gets like both things, maybe maybe that's... Oh my god. The whole thing is so ridiculous that the whole thing is a choice, you know? Because I think I speak for myself and, and most reasonable people watching when you say that it isn't a choice. You don't decide. You discover things about yourself, and maybe that's what these people actually mean, that people shouldn't be allowed to see this because then they can't discover who they really are, and they should pretend it doesn't exist. I also think there is a surprising number of people who are, for example, bi in the closet that thinks that it's a choice for everyone because they were indoctrinated when they were young to believe it was a choice, and in that context it makes sense. It's not a nice logic because it kind of like re you know, reverses the blame back on the LGBTQ and say like, oh, it's just bi people being secure. It also isn't a thing because the reason it exists is because they have this crap system around it that convinces people it is a choice, and for these people who are forced to be in the closet, then it like that's how it makes sense in, in their heads when they're forced to be indoctrinated by this. So it's not a thing that should be blamed back to the community, but it's more a commentary on how messed up the system and attitudes in certain places really are and what it forces people to do. My girlfriend, right, and I left trans two years HRT on New Year's Eve. That is so beautiful. Look at that. That is so wholesome. I love stuff like this. I need to come to the subway more often. I just feel like there's hope for humanity when I come here after doing like <laughs> an insane parents bingo. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Look at this pride flag. You, you see? You see? It's a, it's a pride flag with no straight lines. All the lines are gay. Oh, and there's a little, like, a disclaimer from OP. To clarify, no hate towards straight, trans, or intersex, or any other straight people in the community. This was just a fun idea I had. I'm not trying to separate LGB from TQ+. I myself am a trans girl. My boyfriend is a trans guy making it a straight relationship. So if you're straight, I'm sorry if I made you feel excluded in any way. You're just as valid as everyone else. I just think it's, like, a fun little silly post, you know? It, it's, a, it's just a silly little thing. I don't think you have anything to feel bad about, but it's a nice little disclaimer. This review never leaves my head. Troy. 2004, two stars. I can excuse historical inaccuracies, but I draw the line at Achilles being straight. Historical accuracy is one thing, and then there's historical accuracy. That's important. Man, that's just a straight up lie. <laughs> Got him. South Korea legally recognizes same sex couples for the very first time. Woo! Go, South Korea. Heck yeah, step in the right direction. If you don't want to watch The Last of Us because it has gay storylines, because it has a trans character, that's on you, and you're missing out. Yeah, I was so surprised 
how upset people were. Like, was it episode three? I think it is. With with the gay couple and all that stuff. I'm not gonna spoil too much, but it's like, there are very few things in, in cinema that actually made me cry. Up made me cry. I, I was a wreck. I was sitting like at a Saturday being really, really hung over in my couch watching up and I was like bawling half the time. And then there's that episode, right? There's like two or three times in cinematology that has legitimately made me cry. And that is one of them. It is so incredibly beautiful. And the fact that people can be upset by that, I don't know. I just, I just feel like may, may, maybe humanity is a little whack, yo. I swear to God, people have, people have too much free time and too little stuff to actually be upset about. Oh my god, there's this couple on the screen that isn't specifically the same kind of couple I am in. Oh my god. Oh, LGBTQ plus people. Me, cishet white guy. All I did was not be a horrible person. <laughs> Fam, it does kind of feel like that. <laughs> He's just like, look at this amazing person. Like, all, all I do is read memes, fam. <laughs> god. No, but really, most of the stuff I see coming out of the communities online regarding this stuff is relatively heartwarming. Or if you go to any creator communities that are very closely involved or actively in this kind of community, it's usually very like warm and cozy places. It, it's surprisingly nice and welcoming, especially for being on the internet. Like <laughs> the internet is a bit of a cesspool in general. So having these little islands of just good vibes, it's, I don't know, it's really nice. I like it. Agree to disagree is reserved for things like I don't like coffee, not racism, homophobia, and sexism, not human rights, not basic common decency. If I offend you during this, it is personal. We do not have a difference of opinion, we have a difference in morality. Yeah, agree to disagree, it's like it reaches a point, right? <laughs> On a festival created by Polish national TV that is controlled by Polish government, which is homophobic, a band called Black Eyed Peace performed with LGBT flags. That is beautiful. I also kind of like how it's written like it's some like unknown indie band. I don't know, it's like Black Eyed Peace, this is an indie band, I'm not sure who they are, but they have these bands. <laughs> I mean, it's really wholesome and nice. I just kind of lolled at how it's written. That's very funny. <laughs> Whoa, bro, you're getting married and you didn't tell me. Luigi doesn't question how Mario presents his gender. He just wants to go to the wedding. The priorities. When the priorities are... I was going to say when, when the priorities are straight, but in this case, maybe the priorities are quite... Uh, quite gay indeed. She slash her. Before and after the vaccine. <laughs> I've taken large amounts of estrogen. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> it's like... They had us in the first half, not gonna lie. Damn, look at them vaccines making us all whammy-fied, oh my god. I mean, it's, yeah, before, I mean, technically correct, you know? It's tech, but... Speaking of, like, the vaccine logic that is very much making fun of, I remember reading that post, I think it must have been Insane Parents or something, when someone said, My, my daughter took the vaccine last month, and now they're dead! And someone in the comments just like, Karen, they got hit by a car. <laughs> Fam. Correlation and causation is a mind-boggling concept. Congratulations, though, that looks absolutely swagger. Hell yeah. The Deseret Mormon alphabet contains a letter that looks like Among Us and is pronounced like gay, which is so cosmically funny. <laughs> that is my favorite letter. Look at that, it's so good. Okay, I have a new favorite letter, officially. This is absolutely beautiful. Oh my god, I need to make pins with this or something. That is so good. <laughs> Read a biology textbook. Okay, gender is not the same as sex. Biological sex refers to the anatomical and physiological phenotype. Gender is a category assigned by the individual based on behavior, cultural practices. One's gender need not coincide with one's biological sex. N no, you can't use a modern textbook. <laughs> You have to read the other one from the 1950s. Something I think people like that don't quite realize, or may maybe just uh, choose to stay ignorant on it, is that there is so much about being a person that is just a spectrum that is so much based on who you are as a person, how you choose to present, and how you choose to be. Like, it's everything. It's social behaviors, it's extroversion versus introversion, personality types, you name it. Like, the specific things that we have chosen is like more specifically traditionally masculine or feminine or whatever. The fact that that wouldn't be some kind of spectrum or things can fluctuate between them based on person and interest and how you want to present, etc. It's like wild. Why would everything else be quite flexible and vary so much between people, but that one thing can't? Uh, bruh. Four years on T, and I'm grateful every day for the chance to be just another guy, FTM. That is absolutely amazing. Heck, you even got the mustache down. Man, I need to grow up a mustache again. Should I grow out a mustache again? Maybe for Movember. That'd be a cute thing. Heck yeah. One thing I noticed with mustaches is they get more thick 
every time you try to like grow it out. It, it's kind of nice. I'm not sure if it's just me being better at taking care of it or if it's actually a thing. First time going to a gay bar last night. Everyone was straight and it made me feel weird and disappointed. That's just a sad kitty with a sad flag, no. Sadly, it happens all the time, queer bar death. The worst thing is it's often through good intentions. Allies going to bars to support the community, but because they simply outnumber us, they drive us out accidentally. This happens a lot in the US as well. Almost every good queer bar in Washington DC has fallen to this trend. I think it's partially or mostly the good intentions and allyship noted above. I think it's also that sometimes the queer bars are straight up better. Better music, more fun, and most importantly, often feel safer, especially for young women. Yeah, I've been to a couple of gay bars in my days, and I kind of agree, the vibes are usually very nice. It's a shame to see that that is like taking over in that way. Um, it, it's, such a, it's such a shame because it isn't from bad intentions. Like they said, it's like, oh, I'm gonna support this business that is supporting this movement and my friends and stuff that are gay and we wanna go there, etc. It's such a shame that that is the trend that it comes to. Let me know in the comments if you've experienced the same thing locally or if it's somewhat established or vice versa what the demographics are. I would be intrigued to know if this is like localized to certain regions or if it's like a international phenomenon. We don't want your cis kids to be trans. We want your trans kids to survive. That is such a good sign. That is such a good sign because the rest of it is just such a straw man argument. It's like the gay agenda. Ah, they're turning everyone gay. <laughs> Jeez, man, I don't think anyone is arguing that. Replacing my conservative dad's tumbler left with my custom-made one. Wonder how long it will take him to notice. Leftist tears, but here is leftist bear, <laughs> hot and old. <laughs> that is so good. Oh my god. I hope he's also like a little bit dyslaxative so he doesn't actually notice until a couple of months later. And it's like, wait a second. Did it always say this? <sighs> oh, that's beautiful. That is beautiful. I hope he realizes because someone comes up to him and be like, Hey there, <laughs> you look very nice with that mug. Mm. And maybe that changes his mind. It's like, I feel complimented and accepted and warm, and I like being called the bear. Happy Pride from my cleaning lady. Hi, Mr. Justin, I just finished your house. Great, thanks. I clean extra good and leave you some treats. Well, thanks. My sons say it's the month your people celebrate being fancy. <laughs> uh, pride? Yes, I'm very proud of you. That is so sweet. <laughs> that is so sweet. The month of being fancy. I like that, though. We should have more fabulous months during the year. That sounds, that sounds like a blast. A little bit of warning for the next post. It's a bit more heavy than some of the other ones, but I think it's important, and the comments had some really good insight for this person and some, some advice. Am I betraying my community? SA. Please, please help. I'm at the end of my rope. Trigger warnings for SA. Grooming, etc. All the bad boo. Trans women have a predatory rap pushed by the right wing. It makes me so sad. And that's wholly unfounded. In every group of people, there will be predators. My ex was a trans woman, and while she was 19, I was 16. We were involved. While I would not pursue action against her for what we did, because I feel like I consented, though I was in a bad mental state, but so was she, I thought it was weird, respectfully, what the frick is a 19-year-old doing with a 16 year old. I did some digging on her past. She was supposed to go to court for essaying someone while a minor. The victim was 14 at the time, if I'm correct, but somehow that case never saw the inside of a courtroom. And there are multiple, multiple people I've encountered that want her dealt with, people affected by her actions. But I feel like, as a trans man, I am betraying my community. I am enforcing that unfair reputation. I broke down crying because I feel like I'm doing something wrong. I don't know the first thing about legal processes, and I break under pressure. If I take her to court, what if I say something wrong? Do I testify against her and use my experiences against her? How do I build a case? What if I hurt thousands of innocent trans women? I feel like I'm hurting the only group of people that's ever accepted me. I have no family to speak of and little support group beside the two long distance people. I am so stressed. Am I doing the right thing? Please offer advice and comfort. I need it. It sounds from the brief context, especially towards the end, that that would be someone a typical serial abuser would target. Like I said, I don't know more about it, but the fact that they would try to target someone and either cut them off from support networks or target someone who doesn't have a support network in place, for example, family and older people around them that are looking out for them is a very typical pattern to look out for. No way, man. Look, there are bad people in every group. If she's been doing this a long time with multiple people, she is a chronic abuser. You aren't betraying anyone. The bigot's gonna bigot whether it's reality or not. They blame 
blamed HRT for that school pew pew a while back with zero evidence. She's the one betraying the community by freaking essaying people. I don't know about the legal side of things as I was too timid to pursue my own, but do not blame yourself no matter what happens here. You are doing the right thing. Thank you. I'm sorry. I'm just scared. Everyone but myself involved in this is a minor and I am freshly 18. That is really young to deal with these things. I mean, 18, technically adult, but like at 18, you're still very, very young. We shouldn't have to deal with this. Yeah, no one should have to deal with this, but it's definitely worse when you're that age and you feel like some sort of power dynamic. And especially if the other person has a track record of doing this, because it means they probably target people they think they can get away with doing it with. That's at least what I have seen when it comes to patterns with people that do these kind of stuff. As a trans woman, you're not betraying anyone at all. She's the only person betraying anyone, both her community as well as her victims. Thank you. Having a perspective from someone, I am scared this would affect helps. It was hard, hard lesson to learn someone can be awful, even if they're a part of the community supposed to be about love and fighting for what's right. It's all awful. I 100% second this. If you take her to court and the worst case scenario happens and conservatives use to attack us, I won't be mad at you for betraying trans women. I'll be mad at her. She's the one who did something wrong. One sad part about reality, and it's something that bad actors often use to cherry pick as well to push agendas as the comments talk about, is that every single demographic has bad apples. There is sadly no way around that. But also using that as like a punching bag and saying, hey, this means that everyone is bad and how can this community be good if this bad thing happened? It's like, well, bad things happen everywhere. That's just humanity, sadly. And if you're not convinced shit like this actually gets cherry-picked to push specific agendas and to demonize people, a very simple thing as someone who's worked a lot with statistics in the past is that if you really wanted to prove something like this, you would need to prove that this specific group of people has a higher density of these sort of problems than the overall population. Like, you need the control group outside of the specific thing to prove something. Only cherry-picking, you can do anywhere and try to push an agenda and this has been seen countless times with any kind of groups or minorities or whatever it might be. It is a sucky method and it preys on the fact that people get carried away in these emotional responses instead of actually looking into this like is this statistically feasible? Does this have significance? And the answer is usually no, it does not. As for the case in specific, yeah, they are definitely wrong. You have nothing to feel bad about. You're a victim from someone who is a serial abuser, and sadly, they probably target people based on the fact when they don't have support networks, which is really gross. So never ever feel like you did something wrong. You are allowed to defend yourself, no matter who the other person happens to be. You're not betraying anyone. If anyone betrayed anything or any cause, it is them. They are the bad person here not you, and I wish you the best of luck in dealing with this and moving past it. New cake purchase policy. Every cake request begins with, I am gay and I need a marriage cake. Wait for a response, and if they're accommodating, then you say, actually, I need a birthday cake for my son. I just wanted to make sure you weren't a pile of poo. <laughs> If everyone started doing this, it would be such a slap in the face to this whole thing. I'm allowed to serve who I want to serve. Well, ye de doodle de doodle, I'm also allowed to buy from who I want to buy, and there you go. You kind of just eliminated. You turn like that free market stuff just back at him, baby. Oh, oh God, fruit, vegetable, oh, plants. Oh, yes. Oh, yes, indeed. That is, that's such a cute comic. Man, I like that. It's so nice. That's so nice. This could be used as like a pedagogical comic. That's beautiful. So, uh, she's gay now? Yeah, she turned in all the paperwork last week and her acceptance letter came this morning. It was all pretty sudden. Yeah, you need you need like the gay driver's license. It's kind of like a driver's license, but it's just a license to be gay. It's very fabulous. <laughs> A middle school in Georgia. Imagine walking into your child's school and seeing this. What, is some colorful stuff? Are people this sensitive nowadays? There have been 41 uh, pew pews this year. I feel like that is scarier. Yeah, no, a little colorful flag ain't, ain't, ain't gonna kill nobody. I'm just gonna be honest, fam. Jesus Christ. Imagine walking into your child's school and seeing this. Yeah, I'm imagining it. Now what? Hey, mamacita, can I get your number? But don't call me that and know I am lesbian. Why do you say that? Because I am lesbian? Stop saying you're lesbian or men won't want to date you! That's the point! <laughs> God, I've seen this reiterated a ridiculous amount of times. It is absolutely amazing. But, but if you say that you don't like men, men aren't gonna wanna pursue you. Yeah, 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 that's, 
Yes! Once my brother got into a fist fight with a trans guy, and when he got sent to the principal office, the principal kept going like, How dare you hit a woman! And my brother got so offended on the trans guy's behalf that he got into a fist fight with the principal too. This will forever be my favorite story about him. Beats the poo out of a trans man. Oh my god, why did you just do that to a girl? Death! Did you just call him beats the poo out of a transphobe to defend and trans man? Uh, just to clarify, it was only a verbal fight with the principal. Uh, update, I was wrong. He did in fact try to punch the principal. <laughs> they just stopped him. <laughs> Is there like a saying for this? It's like there, there's a pile of poo poo, but there is like a nugget inside the poo poo, right? It's something like that. It's like a bad situation. People are fighting. There is violence, but you're still like standing up for the right of the other person. You know, it's kind of, I don't know. It's so, it's something like violently wholesome about this. I drew different pride flags as mythological creatures. Oh, see, that is so cool. Oh my God, that is amazing. You could turn these ones into tattoos. If you open like a merch shop and have these ones as though this, you know, little water tattoos that come off after a couple of days, I would buy a few. Let me know. Anti-LGBT plus campaigners would have you believe that the general public doesn't support gender diverse people. Meanwhile, in the UK, a non-binary person and a trans woman just spent weeks at number one, currently still top 10. The silent majority of people support trans and non-binary folk. Yeah, that's actually a good point. And especially online, the most extreme voices are usually the thing that floats to the surface. It's not about this topic specifically, but there is a chapter in the book called Factfulness by Hans Rusling, which very much digs into this topic regarding specifically news and it talks about how it's only the tail end of all the news and things that are happening in the day that actually make it to the news and on top of that humans are very negatively skewed in what catches our eyes you're much more likely to see a news article about the recent tragedy or people dying or something like that instead of seeing like oh my god th there's a the cute shelter for kittens the negative stuff is much more eye-catching. That's just how humans work. And that's what you see on YouTube as well, for example. How many thumbnails are like clickbaiting the most recent drama or scandal or something negative or pointing out the problematics. I mean, a lot of my videos even talk about that stuff, although inside the video I try to be a bit more of a positive spin to not make it so exhausting. But this is how humans work and this is how media work on top of it, which also means that in a lot of cases the most Hateful rhetoric is the stuff that also floats to the surface because it is the most outrageous. Not saying it doesn't exist, we should definitely fight for the issues that are prominent and that still definitely exist in the world, but don't feel hopeless, I suppose, is a good takeaway because the vast majority of people aren't the knuckleheads on Twitter. We got married. That is such a beautiful photo. You see, that's the thing. These subreddits just bring me hope about humanity. Look at that. There is still happiness out there, baby. Team Rocket casually in 1997 saying screw you to societal norms. <laughs> It is so good. Yeah, Team Rocket always gave me like really sassy vibes. What if they were the heroes all along? Oh my god, I would love to do that. Maybe it exists already. Most of my great ideas already exist. Sadly, god damn it, world, why does it have to be people that were created before me? Disgusting. But wouldn't that be amazing if you follow a story and you think you're following it from a protagonist, like, you know, Ash, for example, and Pikachu, and it turns out they were just poo poo all along, and the real protagonists were the ones that were villains in the first three seasons. Just like, oh my god, it was all misunderstood and twisted. Oh my god, the plot twists. As a trans woman married to a cis woman, I am in what I call a Schrodinger's marriage. Conservatives tells me my marriage isn't legitimate because they oppose two women being married, while at the same time calling me a man. In which case they should have no problem, right? <laughs> oh, that is absolutely beautiful. Schrodinger's marriage. I need to use that at some point. That is so beautiful. It reminds me so much of the of the person who ran topless through the parking lot. It just calls out the hypocrisy in such a beautiful way. And I love it. I love seeing awkward and weird boys develop and mature into confident, assertive, and self-respecting women. <laughs> Woo! Nobody knows I am gay. Let's see, now we have a little rainbow cup, we have a little pins, we have that very small but slightly noticeable flag in the background. We have the, the scale of colors right there. Is that a little gay elephant? Maybe it is. I'm slightly colorblind, so it's sometimes difficult to, like, make out which rainbow is which, but it looked very colorful. I'm assuming it's a gay elephant, and you have like colorful things on the side. Oh my god, it's beautiful. Yes, it's a very well-kept secret. It's been 172 days. This poo is finally over. Corporal Williams report for boyfriend duty. <laughs> oh, that is so good. Oh my god, it's amazing. Yes, indeed, this is a glorious photo. Nice. Attending my first wedding since transitioning with my fiance. Right. 
That is absolutely gorgeous. Hell yeah, you're rocking that. That is so nice. Oh my god. Weddings are amazing. Just to like see what people rock for outfits. It's so good. I wish it was a bit more diverse for men with outfits, honestly. It's easy in one way, right? Because you're, oh, I have a, I have a black suit. It's always gonna work. But I also sometimes wish there was a bit more like room, wiggle room for, for spats. Standing looking in the mirror and thinking of all of this stuff. You are not a joke. That's actually kind of true. It's one of those observations you don't think about, but it's very often ridiculed in a way. Hmm. I haven't really seen it that way before, but it's actually kind of true. When Aunt Carol is trying to tell me about how my naughtyality is a face, when my face has lasted longer than her marriage. Bye, Bert. <laughs> oh my god, Aunt Carol, is just a face? Does that mean your marriage was a face? Hmm? Oh my god, Carol. Look, a UFO must be a powerful alien. Oh, kind and wise alien, what is your wisdom? Trench, right? Oh, hell yes. So this one, Dave laughs, of a person I considered a friend. So turned out to be an extreme homophobe. My mom is a lesbian, and I just could no longer call him a friend. So I had it covered up with this. Oh, that's so good. That is so good. Hell yeah, I love Dave. He's such, he's, such, he's such a dude. The Guardian. Please don't use the Q word. Anyway, queer is a slur is a dog whistle for transphobia pushed by old turfs who hate it for being too inclusive and tricked a whole generation of young people to parrot that thought. It's been reclaimed since the late 80s. It is common academic. Out of here with this, Guardian. I call myself queer sometimes. I told my grandmother, who is 90 once, and she got upset, saying I should not call myself that. She is okay with me being bisexual. My aunt, who passed away a long time ago, was a lesbian. I think my grandmother associates queer with a slur because of that. I don't use the term around her, but I still use it for myself. Edit to clarify, I would never call someone else the word, only myself unless someone else identified as such. My mom hates the word queer for some reason. She understands that there's a different connotation now, but I've seen her flinch when it's used before. To her and many of those in old generation, it's still a slur. I think it depends so much on time and usage and how you saw it being used. I've seen this vary so much between generations, languages, countries, and culture. Uh, for example, the word gay was very often tossed around as an insult back in the day when I was like in high school. This was like between, you know, 2005, 2010-ish kind of vibes. And it got kind of reclaimed in the last 10 years. It has changed meaning drastically. Maybe it's still used that way in certain contexts, or maybe I'm too old now to see where it's being used in a bad way. But very often in my surroundings and communities and that kind of stuff, it's very much used as a lighthearted term or in a joking fashion or as a term of endearment. Um, it's not used with the same energy. And I suppose maybe this has changed in a similar way as well. Although to be fair, I have seen it used in ways where it kind of feels ugly in your mouth as well. I saw some kind of panel recently where someone was asking a question like, are oh, you Q words? And it's like, okay, now, now, now you can feel the word being used ugly. You know, there is a difference in vibe. But it varies so much between countries as well, which is something I think is important sometimes, especially online when things are very often uh, traversing cultures and borders and languages. Take for example something that was sort of a slur when I grew up, which was CP. And it's not the CP you would think about as the shortening for bad content as used on online nowadays. It stands for cerebral palsy. And for some reason this shortening was bastardized by teenagers around the time I grew up and used as an insult. I'm assuming it was used very similar to like what the R word was used as back in like, you know, American high schools and that kind of thing. But that was the word that, for example, the teenagers where I grew up chose to bastardize as an insult to toss around and bully people with. So it doesn't have the same meaning at all. And of course, when I read it online, I know that, yeah, it's not referring to this. This is not referring to that one weird bully I had when I was 15 who said I was CP for needing an extra class in language because I was dyslexic, you know. So uh, it varies so much between various places. So I think listening to people is important, but it's also important to not assume malice all the time unless it is obvious it is there. Guiding people is good. If they don't listen to the guidance, then you can call them a poo-poo. I named you because you didn't have a voice. Now that you find your voice, it is for you to tell the world who you are. Accept your kids for who they really are, not for who you want them to be. I think that's beautiful. It's always like a balance between parenting and stuff with guidance, and teachings and that kind of thing, but also let, allowing people enough room to be themselves. It is a beautiful balance. My cis het bot every time I see a queer person, I have never met accomplished something. I am really proud of you. 
Hell yeah. Beautiful memes. Love it. Today is just bringing me hope about humanity, isn't it? It's such a good vibe. Family, it is unacceptable to dress feminine and shave. You're not gay. Me? Comes out as gay. Family, it's just because you're gay doesn't mean you have to act gay. <laughs> Do this stuff. <laughs> it's like, oh, I have the solution. <laughs> God damn it, family. I've always wondered why gay flags have straight lines. They're not straight lines. They're gay bars. Oh, I like this comment. The dictionary definition of woman is adult human female. Cambridge Dictionary's definition of woman, man, is now more inclusive. Hmm. <laughs> Look what you've done. You let my son read a book about hippopotamus and now he is one. My husband and I won't stand for this. You'll be fired. Isn't that right, Henry? Uh, we should talk about this, honey. <laughs> When the carrot just goes off and the teacher... God damn, the amount of stuff teachers have to put up with nowadays, it kind, it kind of scares me. My god, they don't get paid enough for all this BS. Who are we? The LGBT plus community. And what do we want? Equal rights. World domination! <laughs> I've seen... I've seen the memes. I've, I've seen I've seen the propaganda about invading Denmark and stuff. They were even planning to invade Sweden at some point, I think. Oh, wow. Straight teen spends hours building fabulous Minecraft castle for gay friends rejected by parents. Why are the parents doing in Minecraft if they're this boring and stupid? Disgusting. Ah, rainbows with tornado and lightning. The gays are angry. Oh, that's absolutely beautiful. This is like when Zeus is pissed or something like that. The ancient gods were, were quite uh, liberal with the flesh, so to say. Mm. Well, laddies, lasses and lasses, I do hope you enjoyed this video as much as I enjoyed having you here, you beautiful, wonderful bean. And I hope to see you again in the very near future. Remember, have an amazing day because you deserve it. And keep a lookout for the little demon. Comes out on the 23rd of November, yes indeed. And it glows in the dark, just like your little heart. Oh, yes indeed. I'll see you very soon. Take care and... Um,